Hello and welcome to Gefet in the Daf. I'm Yael Shimoni, bringing to you together with Hadran and Yeshiva Trisha, learning a little bit more in depth of your Daf Yomi skills and helping you to get to know the Rishonim on the Daf. And of course, in the Sechen Nadarim, we're doing a lot of work with the run. And today we're approaching at the end of the parak, and we're going to learn two Tibuya Matchilim of the run. One discussing halacha issues, and the other talking about agada. So we'll begin with Daf Lamed Aleph. There, there is a Mishnah uh, that has a few words which, which are slightly unclear, and we have the Rishonim explaining what are the meanings of these words. So the Mishnah says, "Sheni ne'enem Yisrael lokach biyoter u'mocher b'fachot. Yisrael ne'enim li lokach b'fachot u'mocher biyoter ve'en shom imur." The Mefarish here, which is instead of Rashi, it looks like Rashi, but it's not Rashi, as we, we commented before, explains to us the Misha and says the following. If somebody said that he's not going to have Hana'a, enjoyment of, uh, of other Israelim, it means that if he's selling something, he cannot sell it at a good price. He must sell it at a low, low cost. So he won't enjoy it. He won't get any, any hana'a from the people who are buying from him his goods. And if he says the opposite, lo mimeni, lahem beyoker. If he says that Israel cannot enjoy him, he'll have to uh, take high prices because he can't have the people buying from him anything enjoying his uh, selling, right? Because when you buy and sell, there is enjoyment on both sides because it's worth to both the buyer and the seller. And here, because of the netter, it can't be worth it for either side. It depends how he said it. And says the Mishnah, and shom imlo, explains the Mefarish, and shom imlo, shelo intza adam shiye shomer lo bedavar zeh, shebishbud nidrom, ozeh lo mochel lo bezol, v'ikach mimeno beyoker. Explains to me first, when the Mishnah says en shomimlo, it doesn't mean you're not allowed to listen to him. It's, it's, it's not a statement of do or don't do. It's a statement of, de- of describing the reality. The reality of such an ever will create a reality that nobody will want to buy or sell to this person because who will be a person who will be willing <laughs> to do this kind of interaction, which is not worth it to the sides. And therefore, there is absolutely no option to deal with this nether and that, to live with this nether, so he has no choice but to go to the Kuchavim because Israel, Israelis will not be willing to buy or sell from him under these circumstances. So this was the Mefarish. Let's look at the run. So the run starts by saying similar things to the Mefarish. Uh, let's read him in the beginning. Exactly the same as the Mefarish. En Shom Imlo is not a statement of do or don't do, it's a description of reality. Continues the run and says there is a girsa. The it the garse i shom imlo bechirik. Says the run, I have other books that this Mishnah is written, but slightly different. What is the difference? The word ain is not ain, it's only alef yud, not alef yud nutzofit, only alef yud. What is this word e? What meaning does it have? Explains the run, kelomar im shom imlo. E in Aramaic is im, if. So according to this, the Mishnah does not describe a dead end situation. Most people will probably not want to buy or sell with this person, but who knows? Maybe some people will be willing to do so because it's not a total statement. It's an if statement. If people hear him, that's great. And if they don't hear him, that's when he's stuck and he has to go to the Kohavim and continues to run and, and mentions a question that, if we haven't thought about it, obviously we should. And I just want to uh, state that a lot of times when I learn Rishonim, part of what the Rishonim do to me is help me realize that it was a very good question I had to ask. And they actually teach me how to think and how to question 
and how to raise kushiot and questions on the Mishnah. So let's look at what the run says now and see what kind of question we should have asked when we were reading the Mishnah. Continues the run and says, Ve'afilu b'nechasim shekana le'achar nidru. Says the run, this man is stuck. How could it be that he's stuck? Even if he's now buying new goods, even the new goods he can't sell to people in a normal way. And of course, the question is, how come? So why is the Mishnah so obviously uh, strongly thinking that this guy is stuck? Maybe there would have been an easy solution. This man only said that he won't be enjoying people now. So maybe only from the things that people could enjoy from him now, that's where he has to buy and sell in this weird way. But if he will acquire new goods, then these goods are not part of the netter because they weren't here. They weren't around when he was noted. Explains the run. No. Obviously, the Mishnah doesn't think so. And why doesn't the Mishnah think so? Says the run, it is true that when we'll get to Daf Men Zayn, we will learn the deen of En Davar Oser, En Adam Oser Davar Shelo Bar Laolam. A person cannot be Oser, something that is not now in the world. Uh, and what are the examples? For example, to say I have a tree and now it's winter and I'm saying that the fruits that will come out of this tree are us. This cannot work because the fruits are not here. Uh, and also if I say specifically, if I'm going to buy a house, that house will be us. So that all, will also not work. Why? Because I'm talking about something that, that does not exist here and now. So if that is the case, how come if a man said that you can't enjoy him, uh, you he, he can't also buy goods. Uh, it seems that according to, to what we've learned up till now, uh, if the goods are not around, the nether is not hal because a nether, nether cannot be also something that is not now in the world. But explains the run that that is not true. Why? Why? <laughs> Says the Ran, when somebody says this general statement, you cannot enjoy me, he's not talking about his nechasim, he's not talking about his good, he's talking about himself. He's tole the nether in himself, and he is in the world. And therefore, since he is in the world, all the other hanaot, even the hanaot that we future, the future hanaot he'll have, still are included in the nether because the nether was actually hal on the person because of the way the nether was phrased. So we started with the run and we saw two things in the run. First, he, three things in the one, run. First, he, he said there's another girsa, which is very important to know that girsa is something that's not only in the university, it's in the Rishonim. Also, there were different manuscripts of Mishnah and Gemara, and here the run has a girsa. And also that the run teaches us that we should have asked the question, how come this person is stuck? Maybe this person can buy new goods and then these new goods will be outside of his nether. The run's answer is no. It is true that there is a rule that en adam osel davar shubal olam, but here because of the let lashon of the nether, since he was talking about himself, he is in the world and therefore the nether is chal, even on future interactions that this person will have. So now, because we're finishing the parak and there's also Agada, I want to look at a short run on one of the Agadot at the end of the parak. So the end of the parak uh, talks about a Mishnah that is talking about Brit Mila, and then there's a long Agada about Moshe Rabbeinu, and also about Avraham, Velter, Brit Milot. And here, the Gemara talks about how Avraham was told by God to be Tamim. So we know that God told Avram, What does it mean, Bitamim? Says the Gemara, Bitamim means do a Brit Milah. And here we have a famous Midrash saying that Avraham 
thought that he won't have a son because he looked at the stars and he saw that according to the stars, he's not supposed to have a son. And that's why God told, told him, Sehachuta, leave all of your understanding. Trust me, I'm telling you, there is a different way to this. Be tamim with me. Don't guess the future. Don't build on astrology or, or any other way of guessing the future. Put your trust in God. And says Rav Oshaya, if a person does that, then many things can happen. And at the end of this part of the Gemara, we have a statement by a man called Ahava, a Rav called Ahava. Tane Ahava Berei de Rabbi Zeira. A beautiful name of uh, an Amorah, eh, Rav Ahava. Um, love. Okay, so what does he say? כל אדם שאינו מנחש, מכניסים אותו במחיצה שאפילו מלאכי השרת אינם יכולים לכנוס בה, שנאמר, כי לא נחש ביעקב ולא קסם בישראל. Any man who does not guess, then he is put into an inner place, inside of a מחיצה, that even מלאכי השרת cannot enter. And there are מחיצות not only in שור, מחיצות only in שמיים. And here something very interesting happens. Uh, that Malachi Asharet are left beyond the Mechitza, and a man can be coming inwards to be closer to God even from the Malachim. How could that happen? Because it is said in the Passock, So the run here helps us understand what's written in the Gemara. First, the run quotes the end of the Passock. What's the end of the Passock? That's the first part of the Passock. Uh, Israel does not guess. That's the end of the Pasuk. Explains the run. This end of the Pasuk is what the Malachim, the angels, are telling Israel. When an Israeli is inside this Mechitza, the Malachim ask him, Malachi Asheret ish'alu l'Yisrael, ma pa'al el? That's what the Pasuk says. When you don't guess, you get inward to the Kaddish Baruch Hu that you know more about the future, more about what God is going to do than Malachi Asharet. Lefi, shemitoch shena menachshim, machnisin otan lemechitza shena Malachi Asharet yikholim liikanes na. So this explanation of the run is doing something very interesting to the idea of Tmimut. Usually we think that Tamim is a person that really does not know what the future is and, and, and accepts it. And he says, okay, I don't know, and I trust God, and, and, and I continue even without knowing. But according to the perush here that the run pointed out to us, something else happens. When somebody trusts God, and he doesn't ask, and he's not menachesh, he doesn't guess his future, what happens? He really does know much more about his future. Because God tells him secrets about the future. So this is a very different concept of Tumimut. Tumimut is not somebody who doesn't know. Dafka, a real tummy, will know more about the future than even Malachi Asheret. And explains the run, Says the run, you know, maybe you're surprised, but I want to explain. This is Mida Keneged Mida. That's the Mida of God. God uh, mirrors us. Yes, if we do something, then God is, do, does a similar thing. So if we trust God, God will trust us. And the result of that will be that we will know more. But the the secret of Tmimut, the, the, the Shorish of Tmimut, the Ikar of Tmimut, is not not knowing is to have trust. And if you have trust, you will be trusted back. So this is a very uh, interesting and, and thoughtful run about what Mimut is according to the run. So today we did both halacha and agada, a bit of taste for the end of the parak. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, this learning of the run. It was really fantastic throughout the Masechet. I highly recommend if you can, try to skim through him and see how he adds to your knowledge and understanding of the daf that you're learning. And Bezrat Hashem, I hope you will have Chodesh Tov, Chodesh Kislev, 
we'll be meeting again in the next parak next week. Take care and good Shabbos.